Whether you're a fan or not, there are times where a little bit of subtle animation on a website can make a big impact. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use some free tools to be able to add animation to your block-based sites. Now, I'm going to be using Generate Blocks in this example, but it should work with native Gutenberg. It should work with any kind of block plugin. Like I said, this is totally free. And there are multiple options. I'll link to some other ones that I think are worth checking out. So let's take a quick example of some animation that I'm talking about. This isn't particularly subtle, but I've overemphasized it just to demonstrate how you can add this in. So here's the example site. If we scroll down, you'll see the various different properties will animate into view as you kind of go into the actual section itself. Nice smooth animations. If we scroll down, you see we get this fade effect that's kind of staggered. If we also go into one of the properties, you see we get this animation effect as we scroll on through. You'll see that when we come down, we get this fade in effect. So this is using a combination of different things. We're using it as part of a template where it'll animate every single time you load that template in. And other parts like this section are actually using native Gutenberg blocks inside the native Gutenberg editor to add this content in. So I'll show you how easy it is to set these things up. So for this example, we'll be using block animations for Gutenberg blocks, which is from Theme Isle. But there are other options available that do pretty much the same thing. Another good example is animation for blocks, which again is totally free and works in fundamentally the same way. Take your choice. I've chosen the Theme Isle one because it has more actual use cases, over 60,000. So that's why. Okay, so once we've activated that, just hop into any of your templates or your pages. In this example, we're looking at the home page. If we scroll down, We'll open up the panel from the left hand side and choose my post template loop, which is just this actual template area here. So now if we come over to the right hand side, you'll see we've got animations as one of the options. Let's open this up. And inside there, we've got a couple of simple options. And the, the beauty of this is it is very simple. With a little bit of creativity, you can get some quite nice effects. So let's open up the animation option first. And this is where all our predefined animation effects are available. So you can see if we select one of these, We'll get an animated effect to show what it'll look like. Choose a different one. You'll see how it affects things. Now, obviously, it's affecting all of these because this is a loop. So each one of these is going to use the same thing. If you just use it on something like just the header section here, so we've got this our latest destination, add an animation to that. You'll see it only affects that particular block. So it's what you use it on will dictate the kind of effect that you get. Like I said, I'm using a post template, which is part of a loop, which is why you'll see it apply to all of these. So now what we can do is we can choose what we want. So let's say we want something like a fade. You see we have a range of different options there for fade in, fade in and down, so on. So you can see that will create this kind of effect. You can choose the speed that you want. So we can set this to be faster or slower, depending upon how we want to look. We'll replay the animation. I get a smoother effect on there. You can also adjust any delay that you want. So this is great if you're working with sort of multiple different sections you want to animate in at separate times. Again, I'll show you that in a moment. We'll leave that set to none though. And then you've also got the options for playing this on hover or trigger and offset. Depending upon the actual animation you'll choose, some will have a default uh, sort of offset, some will have none there at all. And this basically means at what point when you scroll it does this effect actually get triggered. You also notice underneath we've got count animations for this example, so you can apply different animations. It tells you how to use those and the typing animation. This is kind of more geared towards text, and again, I'll show you that in a moment. So once we've got that and we're happy with it, we'll hit save. We'll preview our page, scroll down. After that delay, you'll see there's our first animation coming in. In this example, it doesn't really work that well, but you can use it in whatever instance you want with the different kinds of animations. All pretty cool. And that's the delay and everything coming into effect. Now, if we come down, you'll see this one has got that sort of staggered animation. So let me show you how you can achieve this effect using exactly the same plugin. Now, if we always start, let's take a quick look at the structure of this so you can see how I'm actually applying the animation effects. So we've got a grid with four containers. And what we're going to do is we're going to affect the actual container itself because everything that sits inside there, the text, the icon, and so on, is all part of the same thing. We want to animate all that in this instance. So we'll select the first container, come over to our Animations tab and open this up. And for this one, we'll just choose a simple fade. We'll say fade in, and we'll leave that with nothing else. We'll leave the speed and everything as it is for now. We'll choose the second container, open up the animation effect again. This time, again, we'll choose the fade in. But what we're going to do is we're going to apply a delay or an offset to this. So we'll say 100 milliseconds. So now the first container will animate in as soon as it comes into the viewport, then wait 100 milliseconds for this one to then animate in, and we can repeat the exact same process for each one of these. So now you'll see we'll replay the animation. 
that shows us what that animation is like. We'll hit save. Again, we'll preview this. We'll scroll down our page. And as it comes into the viewport, you'll see they animate in one at a time using that fade in effect. So you can get quite creative with this very easily just by applying it to the relevant different sections and applying a sort of time delay onto that to create a nice kind of staggered effect. It's pretty cool. Now, another effect that we have works in a slightly different way. For example, let's select this text, click the drop down arrow, and in there we've got typing animation. We'll select it. We'll choose the delay, so you can see we've got how many milliseconds, seconds, and so on. So we say like 100 milliseconds. The typing speed, let's say we want this to be fast, and let's go and check that out. And there we go. We've now got our little typing animation, typing the text on. Not the best place to have this, but if you were creating some kind of hero section and you wanted to have some animation in there, some sort of typing on effects and all those kinds of good things, you could use this plugin to do exactly that. So now we've seen how to do this with templates. Let's take a quick look at how easy it is to do this to just the content that you may use as a normal post. So while this is a custom post type, this is still using the standard Gutenberg editor. There's nothing special about this. So what I can do is I can easily come down, for example, to this image, select it, and you'll see our animation effects are available on the right-hand side. Choose this, choose the animation that we want, Let's say something like bounce in. There we go. Looks terrible, but you kind of get the idea. We'll save this. And before we check out the actual end result, if you're getting value from this video and you enjoy it, why not hit that subscribe button to be notified when I release new content? I add new videos every single week. So you want to be updated? Hit that subscribe button down below. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the actual end result. And you can see we get this animation effect. That's part of my template that I've set up. And as we scroll down, when we get to the content, we've just created inside standard normal Gutenberg. You can see as we scroll down, we get that animation effect as it pops into the viewport. And you can see that now shows the final result. Now, with a little bit of time and effort, you can use these animations to create some really nice quality, subtle effects. Or in some instances, not so subtle, but that's up to you. What are your thoughts? Would you use this in your own projects? Have you looked for an animation plugin? Have you got a better option? Let me have a comment down below and let me know. As always, all applicable links are in the description. If you want to learn more about working with WordPress, check out this video next. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.